So a few days ago I created this rob simulation in Flutter and many of you seems to enjoy what I created and I got a few responses from people want to see a tutorial on this as well so this is the tutorial the main tutorial will be split into two parts and this is the part one of the video where we are going to create a unit basically what I mean by unit is a rob consists of many particles and in this video I'm going to show you how the simulation works for one of those unit and once we understand the basics and how these things are supposed to work we will go on to the part of the video where i'll be covering how to create the entire rope so this is our starter code and as you can see we have just one file the main dot art you can see we have just a hello world assembly here nothing fancy we have not added any library or anything yet we are starting this from the scratch now the next step is creating a new page called spring which will be a stateful widget and this is the page where we are going to draw the spring animation so here uh, right now it is a placeholder i have to remove the scaffold from our main.art to the spring page and we are going to change the home widget to our newly created stateful widget springs Now before going forward, we do need to rely upon one library and uh, here we are going to use this vector math which is used for creating vectors, vectors 2 or vectors 3 and in our project for the spring demo we do need this vector for creating the positions and the velocity and also for calculating the faults as well. Now after adding the library to our dependency, next thing we need to do is import and here when we import we need to take care of one thing we need to give it a, a prefix that is because there is a conflict between some of the classes inside the vector math and the material so to avoid that i'm using a prefix to our class and in this case i'm going to put the prefix as v Now coming into our stateful widget, uh, the first thing we need to create is some member objects, actually vector member objects and let's just name it as anchor and the next object we need to create is the bob or in this case let's rename it to the child so that it will make some sense. now we do need one more vector in this case and uh, it is going to represent the velocity now in our init state let's initialize our anchor vector and let's parse in a value some value of x and y and similarly for the child vector as well let's pass in a different value of y or we can keep in whatever values we want uh, for this assembly let's just keep it like this and for the velocity let's initialize it with a value of zero because initially we don't want it to have any velocity at all now the next step is creating our custom painter for this assembly we are going to use this custom painter for rendering our ui and let's just name it the spring painter after overriding the two methods let's return should repaint as true because we do want our custom paint to be repainted and let's just remove our body and add the custom paint widget and pass in the spring painter as the painter we have almost everything ready in our stateful widget we have the anchor and the child as well we now want to pass it to our custom painter and for that we need to make the final and initialize it in the constructor and now our custom painter is ready for painting so the first thing we are going to do is create two paint objects one for painting our anchor and the next is for painting our child and for each of them i'm going to reuse most of the properties as well now the next step is drawing the circles we are representing the particles as circles here and for drawing the circles we are going to use the vectors x and y position uh, 
and for the anger we are going to give a radius of 20 and for the child let's give it a radius of 10 and after that we are done with the paint method inside our custom paint merchant let's pass in the container as a child so that when we run our app we will be able to see them in the screen now to be more comfortable on the eyes i'm going to change the background color of the scaffold to be black so that our entire canvas will also be black now the next thing we want to create is a lane that connects between the anchor and the child and for that we are going to make use of the canvas dot draw lane method and inside this draw lane method we are going to pass in two offsets the first offset will be the x and y of the anchor and the second offset will be the x and y of the child and as a result we'll be drawing a lane between these two and to make the lane a little bit different we are going to give it a color of white and to make it more thicker let's give it a stroke of four as well now the next thing i want to do here which is completely optional is to wrap our custom paint widget with an interactive viewer so that i'll be able to zoom in and pan around so that it will be more visible for you guys but when you're doing this this is not required at all now before adding the simulation i do want to make the canvas little bit different as well i'm going to increase the radius of the child to be bigger than the anchor point and also change the color of how the child to a blue color now what you're seeing here is what i call the unit and in the next episode where we make the end rope that rope will be consisting of many units of the same thing that you're seeing here right now and the reason why is because we have to apply the calculation for each of the units together to make the rope animation like a real rope simulation so a quick recap will be that our rope will be consisting of many particles and we have to calculate forces between each of the particles and this is the reason why i would recommend to watch this video because otherwise you will not be able to understand how these particles are interacting together now the next thing we need to do is create the update method which will be called every times we want to update the ui and for this i'm going to use timer and timer dot periodic function for that and i'm also going to declare the timer as a member of the class so that i'll be able to cancel it on the on dispose method later when the widget is no longer needed we also need to make sure that the update method is called for the very first time from the init state method otherwise none of this is going to work coming to the calculation part the first thing we need to define is the rest length of a spring which is the length of a spring when there is no external forces acting on the spring the next layer we need to define is the force vector which is the difference between two vectors child and anger we will be using this to determine the force of the spring later the next thing we need to calculate is the displacement x of the spring here the force dot length is the length or magnitude of the force vector which represent the distance between child and anchor positions later we will be using this value x for calculating the hooks law the next thing we need to do is to transform our vector into a unit vector and to do this we use the normalize method provided by the vector 2 now the next part is calculating the hooks law which is this formula and here here we have to multiply the force with this value and for that we are going to use the scale method provided by the vector 2 so we are going to write force dot scale negative 1 and here k is the spring constant and for this case we are going to define it as 0 0.01 and x is the displacement we got above now that we have the spring force available the next thing we need to do is actually update the position of the particles in the canvas so to do this we first need to calculate the velocity and to calculate the velocity we can make use of the force which we have got now so in vector 2 library we can add velocity dot add force this line add the spring force represented by the force vector to the velocity of the child point and by writing child dot add velocity we are able to update the position of the child based on its velocity 
now we have our calculations ready the next step is updating the ui and for that we need to call the set state method and as you can see we have something happening on the canvas but it is still not quite right we still have to do little bit of corrections here now to simulate friction or damping we are going to multiply the velocity by 0.99 and this will cause the velocity to decrease over time slowing down the movement of the child point and eventually bringing it to a stop now the key i among you might have noticed this i had made a mistake with the false calculation what i should be doing was to subtract the anger from the child instead of the child from the anger so while i make the corrections and when i make the corrections and do a an hot restart you can see that the child is moving a bit but it is stopping because we are multiplying the velocity by 0.9 every time so if i comment that go down and do a hot restart again you will be able to see that we have some kind of spring action happening so if i zoom in you can clearly see that we have a spring action and our child is moving between the anchor point and this extender point and if i change the x value of the child to be at the same point as the anger you can see that it is also bouncing back and forth without any loss of energy and if i add the damping of it again by multiplying the velocity by 0.9 you can see that now our spring has a damping of it and it will die off as it loses its velocity slowly slowly every time and the last thing we need to add is the gravity to add the gravitational force we are also going to make use of a vector and inside our init state method we are going to initialize it and for the y value we are going to pass in a value of 0 0.1 we don't want anything to change on the x direction now right after adding the force into velocity we need to add the gravity into velocity as well and this updates the velocity of the child point based on the effect of our gravitational force and when we hold position we can see that we have a swinging as well so our child object is swinging in the x direction and also bobbing in the y direction and now it is looking more kind of like a spring kind of animation and we can also play with the different directions we can start our point from in one direction and as you can see i know whichever it starts from the simulation will always end at the same position where we expect it to be and that's it this is the end of the part one of the video and by this video you have some understanding about the spring simulation about the hooks law and how you can use it to create this spring simulation demo and like i said this is a unit of what is going to happen in the rope simulation our rope will be consisting of many particles and there is a spring forcing effect in between all of these particles as well so in the next video we are going to expand on top of this to create a fully complete rope simulation.